to another Christmas content advent calendar video. Thank you once again for joining me. I really appreciate you being here with me in this festive time of year. Of course, it's that time of year where all the Christmas lights are out and that can be a great photographic opportunity. But sometimes it can be quite difficult to actually determine how to take a good photo of Christmas lights. You know, what is the subject? How, what kind of exposure should you go for? What should you be using as a composition? It can be really quite tricky sometimes to establish all of that. I know I've certainly struggled with that in the past, but I went out with the Sony a7 IV, which is a great camera for this kind of stuff because of the ISO capabilities and all that kind of stuff. The 70-200 f2.8 G Master Mark II and the 24-70 f2.8 G Master lens as well. Now, those are two great lenses for this kind of thing you've got a lot of range there, you know, essentially 24 mil out to 200. So you can go wide angle or really zoom in for a much tighter shot. And that gives you a lot of leeway for the kind of composition you might want to use. Now, for me, when it comes to Christmas lights, the first thing you want to establish is what is gonna be the subject of your photo. Now, this is generally true for all kinds of photography, but certainly with Christmas lights, are the lights the subject of the photo or are they framing a different subject within the photo? Now, establishing that is going to really affect your composition, how you want to actually expose the shot, all that kinds of stuff. So that's the first thing to think about. For example, a nice Christmas tree all lit up with lights absolutely might be the subject of the photo. So you might center that up. You might have that slightly off to the side for some context on the other side, maybe some people to show the size of it, something like that. Whereas lights all down a street might actually be better framing another subject. And that's where you might come into some Christmas street photography. If you could have lights kind of either framing or being just off to the side of maybe a nice couple enjoying some sort of Christmassy vibe, that's a great photo incorporating Christmas lights but they might not be the actual subject. Now, of course, part of this is gonna be scouting out locations. I actually went out, before I went out with the camera and lens and stuff like that, I went out to scout out a few different places where lights were gonna be available. And it's actually pretty easy to go around and drive around or something like that and check out where these lights are. In most towns or cities, you're gonna have streets lined with lights, you can have Christmas trees, all kinds of stuff like that, and that's a great way of finding out, okay, where am I gonna set myself up? Where am I gonna take these photos from? You'll find some which will work perfectly as subjects, like this photo, for example, of this kind of gift-wrapped shop, I think works well as a subject, as Christmas lights. But then you've got lights lining a street work well to frame either the street itself or like I said before, some kind of street photography moment. Now you could also go for a more abstract shot. You could zoom right in through some lights and actually go for more of an abstract shot which doesn't necessarily have a defined subject but more of a Christmas vibe or feel to the photo overall. That can be a great way of capturing that Christmassy feel with the lights without necessarily having to worry as much about the composition of a subject. A tripod can also be a very handy thing to take with you. First of all, it allows you to use a slower shutter speed, but second of all, it allows you to get some slightly more creative and interesting shots. So for example, you can have a shot of the street with the lights and all that kind of stuff, but if you use a long exposure, all the people are gonna be moving around. They're all gonna be completely blurred out. But on a tripod, the rest of the shot should be nice and sharp. Now that's a really interesting way of taking a photo like that because you're showing the busyness of Christmas with these beautiful Christmas lights framing that whole thing. Of course, you could also set up in a location where you could get cars or buses or whatever it is driving past and you'll get some kind of Christmas light maybe in the middle that they're driving around but you get all those brake lights and headlights causing these lovely light trails all around your Christmas lights. So in that situation, the Christmas lights are kind of the subject, but framed by all these lovely light trails. So a tripod allows you a little bit more creativity in how you might want to take the shot. Now, if you don't have a tripod with you, or if you don't want to take a tripod into town or into the city, just find a spot where you can rest the camera. Obviously stay with the camera, but find a spot where you can rest the camera and pop on a two or five second timer while using a really long shutter speed. That's gonna allow you to set the shutter to go. It counts down two seconds, five seconds, it just gets rid of any camera shake that might happen as you press that shutter. If you just rest on a wall, on a bench, whatever it is, you can still get the effect of this kind of long exposure shot, which can look really fantastic. I mentioned very briefly earlier the idea of having people in the shot with the lights for either context, for scale, something like that, but it can make for a great kind of Christmas street photography photo. We touched on it a little bit earlier in the video, but I think it's gonna be a really nice way of getting a really Christmassy feeling shot. Because of course, Christmas lights are fantastic, but ultimately, 
it's the people looking at them. It's people looking at them which makes them so lovely. And if you can get a shot of maybe a family enjoying the Christmas lights or, or a couple walking past Christmas lights and they've got Christmas bags or whatever it is, or they're laughing, a really candid, nice street photography moment, that can be a really, really wonderful kind of street photo, but with Christmas lights included. Now, of course, you could shoot through Christmas lights as well. If you can find an area where Christmas lights are a bit lower and you can shoot through them, that's going to frame up any street photography shot that maybe you go for. And from a composition standpoint, that is that is going to be really, really nice. That was a fantastic way of capturing that kind of moment there. Shooting at f2.8 is generally what I would go for because it's letting the most amount of light in, but it does depend a little bit on what I'm going for. With the 24 to 70, I can generally shoot f2.8 most of the time without really any problems. But 70 to 200, I might want to stop down to f4, f5.6, something like that, if I want to just have a slightly deeper depth of field while I'm zoomed in to 135, 150, 200 mil, because that compression is going to start blurring out that background. Now that can work massively in your favor. And of course, another shot you could go for with Christmas lights is to have a subject kind of in the front, whether you deliberately take some with you to take portraits or whether you'd find some sort of street photography moment and then have the Christmas lights blurred out with that beautiful bokeh in the background because they are generally going to give a fantastic looking kind of bokeh to your shot. Now this is where the focal range really comes into play. Having that 24 to 70 and the 70 to 200 really allows you to control your background by zooming in and out. Now I've talked about this in previous videos, but essentially the more you zoom in, if you move then to keep your subject the same size in the frame, you're going to be reducing or increasing the amount of background in the shot. And that can be fantastic for making it so that there's only Christmas lights in the background. You can go for a nice silhouette shot or you can actually increase the amount of background that's there and have a much wider sort of street shot with your subject in the front. Whatever you want to do, you can affect it with these different zoom lenses. Now, if you have any other tips for capturing Christmas lights, I'd love to hear them down in the comments because there's loads of different ways that you can capture these things. And it's kind of a lovely time of year to go out and do this. And because it gets dark so early, it's nice to be able to go out at sort of four o'clock. I mean, half past three is when I went out because it was already getting dark. Yeah, you know, that's crazy. But I love being able to go and do that. You don't have to wait to sort of 8 p.m., 9 p.m. You can go out and do it in the afternoon, which is lovely. So any other tips, let me know down in the comments. Of course, there's links to all the kit that I was using in this video, in the photos down in the description. That A74, hoo hoo, I'm a big fan. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well if you enjoyed the video because of course that massively helps me out. There's new videos every single day through to Christmas Eve. And of course, I'll see you tomorrow. But until then, as always, thanks for watching.